I went to the University of California at Berkeley. I have an MFA from there that I got in 1982. I've been teaching ever since 1982. Been in Santa Cruz since 83. I teach in the community college system and sometimes in the UC system as an adjunct instructor, which means that I uh, drive long distances for part-time work all over the county and uh, the other two counties north and south of us. And um, that's how most of the classes are taught in our community colleges, and I'm one of those adjunct instructors. And if Prop 30 passes, I hope to be employed still next semester. I did an undergrad program in Tennessee, um, an academic, and then I went to do an academic program in Florence at the Florence Academy of Art. So I, I moved into representational art form, and um, and that's what I do now. And my husband and I are opening up a academic program here. Uh, in the few instances I've had to actually um, tutor students, both adult and, and younger students. Um, I personally start making a connection outside myself that's, that's rewarding. Um, and obviously when you're teaching some, somebody something, whether it be art or anything else, you're extending that connection to them and they're connecting to you. And I think that when you learn any art form, you, uh, you learn to get in touch with a connection inside yourself. You learn to make a connection when you share that art, again, whatever that art might be. Um, for me, of course, it's painting and drawing. Well, I am a mother um, that went back to school uh, to the uh, junior college. And so I appreciate every comment you made along those lines. And I know that um, teaching and the uh, academic, the school environment always fed me. And it took me years to get my degree. I worked literally until maybe 10 years ago to finally get my degree. But I was always taking some sort of a class that maybe it applied to the arts, maybe it didn't, but always just educating myself. Mm -hmm. But um, the relationship between the teacher and um, the student, because I've been both, and I was a student for so long, um, I appreciated being a student, you know, just because of what I learned and I mean I just love always uh, being fed. I haven't been teaching this technical way for a while. I used to teach children and a real playful, you know, painting, not very serious, more um, uh, expressionist. And, and now I've gone the other way and I'm teaching a very technical and um, but what I'm finding in teaching something, in teaching realism, is that you, the philosophy behind it is you're going outside yourself to look at something else, to find a truth outside yourself, and then really study it. And it, it almost becomes a um, philosophy of life, it's, it's to go without, outside yourself to see what's going on, and then bring it back into process. And so then you're not, um, having distortion, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. reality around you. It, it's been a very interesting philosophical conversation around the students that have just started um, learning this with us. And, um, and also just being around in other artists in the area, um, in the tannery, learning things from each other. Um, learning for me is something, I always feel like I'm a student as well. As a teacher, I, I wouldn't want to move out of that situation where I wasn't learning still and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, getting better and better at what I do. So. There's so much more to arts education than teaching someone how to uh, draw representationally, even when that is what you're doing. If what you're doing is teaching, you know, um, uh, proportion and scale, there's still so much happens in the classroom and outside of the classroom and having coffee with a student. Um, those are the moments I remember from my education were the sort of down times with my professors and fellow students and I like, to, I like to create that in my own classroom too. There's a lot more than the actual assignment going on 
and a lot of it is thinking and uh, life choices and um, uh, the experience of the professor or the experience of um, students within the classes they share with each other. It's, it's so much more complex than how to draw or paint or whatever the title Meeting, is on the right. course, you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exchange, it's a conversation. The one thing that we'll have, I don't think ever, is um, uh, an extinguishing of the flame of, uh, of people creating things. Um, I mean, look around uh, us now, uh, I'm sure we all have friends and family, um, compatriots who are struggling to get by um, and still they create, still they come back to making what they do. Uh, that I feel optimistic about. Um, in the relatively short term future, um, I just keep hearing nothing but the talks about economic con concerns and cutting budgets, cutting budgets. Uh, I was amazed when I came to California and found that, that art isn't really in our public schools in an official fashion. And it's, it just seems stunning to me. Um, in Maryland, where I grew up, it was there. I think that um, art is kind of like a, um, what's such an integral part of our spirit um, that it won't die of itself. That the educational system um, in teaching art is probably more critical at the younger age than it is at the older age um, for the reasons that Scott mentioned and that we've mentioned too. It's like art teaches thinking outside of the box. Art teaches um, understanding of others. You know, art teaches uh, patience. Art teaches acceptance of yourself and of others and of the work. Um, so I think that it's integral uh, as our survival as humans. It's not just um, a curriculum or a class that we need to round us out. I think that if they, if they had to eliminate, they should not eliminate art. They, art should be like the predominant and the main, the main program. If you're going to teach something, teach them art because it's more con you know, encompassing. It includes so many aspects of life and interrelating. I was educated in a public school in the state of California. This is where I've been um, my whole life. So I came up through uh, Oakland public school system and had a really pretty good arts education at Skyline High School back in the 70s. Um, you know, was able to get into the University of California on Pell Grants when tuition was $350 a quarter and went all the way through to get an MFA in an art department that had 15, 16 full-time tenured professors. Jeez. It's now down to, the last time I checked their website, it was you know a third of that. Um, in my lifetime in California, I have seen a very long downhill slide in arts education, beginning with the passage of Prop 13, back in whenever that was, early 80s. Um, uh, so, no, art's not going to die, but providing access to art through our public school system is in, uh, is in a terrible condition, and it's, it's not looking good for the near future with the condition of um, our state budget. Um, you, know, um, you know, I think that, that would the state cut out math? Would they cut out yeah. uh, engineering? Would they cut out um, uh, reading and writing? It, it's like art is the stepchild of the academic program and um, it's we've been talking about critical thinking and uh, pro, cre uh, creative problem solving uh, is such an important part of any any whole human being whole educated human Absolutely. being in terms of how they navigate life a business um, and someone brought up Steve Jobs. I mean, there's a perfect example of, of a creative person.